Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16 to 19. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16 to 19. Let's hear the word of God. This day the Lord your God commands you to observe these statutes and judgments. Therefore ye shall be careful to observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. Today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments and his judgments and you will obey his voice. Also today the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people, just as he promised you that you should keep all his commandments, and that he will set you high above all nations which he has made, in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. On this note, I wish to welcome you all to In His Presence, where we take the opportunity to worship our Lord and our Savior and our Creator on this special Sabbath day, a day He created, blessed it, hallowed it, rested in it, and asked us to do the same. Welcome to a very lovely Sabbath day where we can worship God in truth and in spirit. If you just joined us, this is in His presence. And we just read from the book Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16 to 19, to usher us into the Sabbath rest. Invite a friend, invite a colleague, invite a family member. If I call them around, that it is time to be in his presence. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, Father, we come before thee this time to give you praise and worship. We are very grateful and thankful for an opportunity to be before you. We thank you for taking, uh, taking charge over us all throughout the week that you've given us life to be able to come rest, take a pause, to reset, take a pause, to consider our relationship with you, to take a pause, to be revived and be rejuvenated in you. Father, Lord, we commit ourselves into your care. We ask that your Holy Spirit lead us this day, that even as we enter into your Sabbath rest, your Holy Spirit will be with us and will guide and direct us in all our ways. Hold our hands, O Lord, our God, be with us, bless us, and keep us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. We're going to take our first break. And when we return, it will be time to pray. Shall look on his face. 
Everyday challenges can be a test to our trust in God. Trusting in God can be a challenging concept, especially during times of uncertainties and difficulties. However, there are many Bible verses that encourage us and guide us even as we seek to deepen our faith and our trust in God. And so today we're going to pray. We're going to pray to trust in the Lord. Beloved, it's not easy to trust in the Lord. It takes only God himself to lead us in that way. And so if, 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 if the challenges of this world, if the difficulties of this world, if the situations in this world keep occupying too much room in your heart and in your mind. Beloved, it's time to pray. It's time to pray, even as we remember this, that God is already in our tomorrows. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom and all its righteousness. And all other things, all others. Is it that you are not seeking the kingdom? 
pray, beloved. Is it that you are seeking all other things to grab before you seek the kingdom? The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Therefore, ask God. God, I've gone astray. All this while I've been leaning on my own understanding and not giving you the opportunity to help me chart my path. Beloved, pray. Pray. Pray because God tells us, the Bible tells us in Psalm 34, sorry, 37 verse 4 to 6. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and justice as the noonday. Beloved, don't let the challenges of this world put you down. Where is your trust? Where is your hope? Who are you leaning on? Pray, beloved. Pray because God is ready to intervene in your life. If only you would trust and obey. Because there's no other way to be happier in Jesus but just to trust and obey. So, beloved, pray. Pray. Pray because we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good and for those who are called according to his purpose. A walk with God is reliance of trust and obedience in the Lord. And so if if, 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 you, if you are not obeying the word of God, pray that God himself gives you that strength. That God himself wipes away all those challenges. It is only him. It is trust and obedience. Pray, beloved. Pray. Pray, I don't know about you, but I know that the Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts. And with my songs, I always give thanks unto him, because he is good, and his mercies endures forever. And so, beloved, it is a must to trust God. There are those who trust in chariots, in horses, in wealth, in pride, in all kinds of things. But if you are a child of God, I admonish you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your, 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 your path straight. So pray. As continue to pray, commit yourself into God's hands. 
Commit the day into God's hands. Commit the coming week into God's hands. When your life is in his hands, you are sure of victory. When your life is in his hands, no matter the challenges that come before thee, you are not scared because you know they are supposed to strengthen you in your resolve to serve him rather than to bring you down. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you are. So pray. Pray. Pray, pray that God holds you, God strengthens you, God empowers you. He says he knows the plans that he has for you. So why are you rushing? Why are you moving ahead of him? Why do you think you can do it on his behalf? Because from your point of view, he's delaying. Time is of essence. But what you do in the right time is even more important. Father Lord, we thank you. We glorify you and lift you high. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you that you are the God of the impossible. You can do anything. I want to trust in your ability and not in my own, Father. Teach me to see difficulties in my life from your perspective. Help us, Father, to see difficulties from your perspective. Help us to focus on you and your power. Father, help us to be like Joshua and Caleb who believed you in a good report or who believed in a good report and focused on you even in hard circumstances. Our responsibility, my responsibility, Father, is to carefully read, trust, and obey your word. Today, I bring before you this difficulty in my life, this difficulty in the lives of your children. Help me not to fear. Help us not to fear, Father, but to trust you in every situation. Help us to declare our faith in your ability to fulfill your promises to us. We know, Father, you will fight for us and win the battles in our lives. You are mighty, you are powerful, you are righteous, and you are true. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and Amen. Beloved, it's good to be in the presence of our Lord. We're going to go on our next musical break. And when we return, the voice you'd hear will be that of Pastor Dr. Divine Ayevo.
Happy Sabbath. We thank God for bringing us again today to hear his words. Words of life, words of hope, words of encouragement, words that lift us out of despair. That's all the gospel is about. When you're down, the gospel is supposed to bring you up. When you're confused, the gospel is supposed to clear your mind. When you're worried, the gospel is supposed to bring you peace. Today we're taking a scripture from Psalms 84 verse 11. 84 11 reads, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. God will deliver you, giving you grace and glory. He stretches his arm in your defense. He does things that the eyes cannot see. And because you do not see him, it doesn't mean he's not there. Elijah is a prophet, mighty prophet of God in Samaria. And uh, he picks up information and gives to the king. Syria wanted to come and attack the king and every plan they make, Elijah tells the king. King said, ah, who among my people is a spy? CIA, FBI, you're here. BNI. And somebody told him, you don't have a spy among us, but a man of God, Elisha, is a prophet. He hears whatever you say in your bedroom. And he tells the king. So the king said, well, the only way we can, we can win this battle against these people is to arrest Elijah. We are going to arrest the prophet. So he sends a big army to surround his little cottage in Dothan. And so they woke up. The servant woke up in the morning and looked and saw soldiers, armies, tanks, horses. And he got so frightened and he ran to the master and said, Master, we are in trouble. Bible says, when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servants said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? You would think the man of God would be frightened and fall down on his face to pray and cry to God, God help us. No, God has already helped. Praise Jesus. Before your troubles come, God knows about them. And unknown to you, he is taking steps to deliver you. Already, before the, you became aware of the problem you think you have now. Nothing happens behind God's back. They say a sparrow who falls to the ground, God knows about it. There are a number of hair on my head. Yeah, it can be bald. But God's microscope can see how many it is. So the man of God, being a man of God, he opens his eyes and he sees what Gehazi couldn't see. Bible says, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open this, open his eyes that he may see. 
open the young man's eyes. You see, our eyes are open already. But they are open to see regular stuff. Spiritual things, God has to open these eyes a second time. And when his eyes were open, the young man, he saw the, behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire run about Elisha. The angel of the Lord encampeth around those who fear him and delivers them. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He is present with you in whatever trouble. And when the devil is chasing you hard, the angels of God pick you up and hold you in their arms. The devil just got to go back because he cannot face the angels of God. The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. Even, even in your mistakes, God's grace is sufficient for you. David driven out of Israel, found himself in the Philippines, in the Philistines, they gave him Ziklag, a place to stay with his 600 people, with his wives, two wives and children, and all that. He had a little camp over there. One day, the Philistine lord, Akish, had to go to war against Israel. Now, Akish provided him food, a place to stay out of danger. And now, Akish said, come and go with me to battle. He prepared his people, and they were going to battle. But how can he, David, fight against Israel? He had already been anointed king of Israel. You can see that turmoil he is so is in. How? How can I do this? Anointed by God to protect these people. And now I am going with the enemy to go and destroy my own people. But circumstances are so twisted that he, he cannot escape. He has to prove he is faithful to, to, to Akish, but it's a difficult situation. He was between a rock and a hard place. But see what God did. While David was being tormented, the Holy Spirit started working on the heart of the laws of the Philistines. So the lords of the Philistines came together and said, Akish, what is this Hebrew doing here? Is that not David? He said, yeah, he's been living with me for years for this. He said, no, we can't allow him to go to war with us. If he goes to the battle and he changes his mind, what is he going to do? He's going to attack us. Send him back to his village. Send him back. So God's grace delivered David from a bad situation. And that's what God will do for you. He is a sun and shield. He will give you grace in your most troubled time. When you, the, the solution is out of your power, you can't do anything about what is happening. Look to God. He has a solution. He can change people's heart to grant you favor. He can do what you are not capable of doing. And then why wrote something? Patriot and Prophet 692. Listen to this beautiful word. 
He said, David seemed to be cut off from every human support. All that he held dear on earth had been swept from him. Saul had driven him from his country. Philistines had driven him from the camp. Amalekites had plundered his city. His wife's children had been made prisoners. His own familiar friends had banded against him, threatened him with death. In this hour of utmost extremity, David, instead of permitting his mind to dwell upon their painful circumstances, looked earnestly to God for help. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He reviewed his past eventful life. Wherein had the Lord ever forsaken him? His soul was refreshed in recalling the many evidences of God's favor. Page 692. What is the lesson here? Recall, always recall what God has done for you. Recall the many times that God has come through for you. It is the same God who will come through for you in this very situation you're in. Yes, you have no human support. Yes, but spiritually, the angels are there to give you grace. The angels are there to give you you a little bit of God's glory. He will deliver you so people can say, how? How did this happen? How could this happen? Because you rely on God. You have problems, you're not the only one. People of God, prophets, Jeremiah had a problem he couldn't sleep for a long time. He got discouraged. But in his discouragement, in Jeremiah 3, 21 to 24, which is lamentation, he said, this I recall. Therefore, I have hope. You need to remember what God has done for you in the past. If you forget, you will make mistakes. You will even become an enemy of God. Lamentation 3, 21, it says, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God gives you 100 grams of mercy today. You spend only 20. Tomorrow, he doesn't give you 80. Tomorrow, he gives you another 100. Praise Jesus. It's renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. Translated, the Lord is all we have. The Lord is all we have. He will deliver you. No matter how the devil cooks his plan, the plan looks successful, God will still deliver you. I want to end with Esther, Haman, and Mordecai. Haman had the upper hand, he was next to the king, he had power, he had money. He can do whatever he wants. And he almost succeeded. He got the letters written. They were dispatched. He was going to kill all the Jews. He set up gallows in his house to hang Mordecai on it. He almost succeeded. How would God turn things around? But then he started falling slowly. Mordecai did something written in a book. 
He needs to be honored. Haman had to give him the honor that he thought he had. But look at the testimony of Zeresh. Zeresh is Haman's wife. It says, when Haman told his wife Zeresh and all his friends everything that had happened to him, his wife never knew Mordecai was a Jew. This is the first time she's knowing it. His wise man and his wife, Zeresh, said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, is of Jewish descent, you will not prevail against him, but you will surely fall before him. That's the guarantee you have as a child of God. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Nobody's evil plan will work. It might seem to be successful. Yes. It might seem that they got you. It might seem that you have no way to go. But God's angels are around you. God will deliver you. Your problem is not beyond God's help. We serve an omnipotent God, an omniscient God, an omnipresent God. No power is bigger than God. The Lord is your sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from you. He will answer your prayers. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, your words have gone out. Give us courage where we lack it. world is getting difficult. Everybody has issues. But let the child of God know that he has God. And when you have God, you have everything. May your blessings be upon us. Lift us up while we are falling down. Give us peace while we are confused. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And answer our prayers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God is life. It is like a two-edged sword. It pierces. Thank you, Pastor Ivo, for the word and allowing God to use you to get to us. Beloved, you just heard the word of God. It is food for the soul. It transforms and it recreates. If you want further Bible study, if you want prayers, if you want somebody to counsel you, somebody to talk to, Pastor Ivo is always ready to do that. And you can see his numbers on the screens. Please call him now. Do not hesitate to call again when the line seems busy. But call, call, because God has a word for you. We want to thank all of you who have been supporting us over the weeks, over the months, over the years with your finances. Without you, this message and others like this would not be going out. We say God richly bless you and may you continue to support if this is the first time you are hearing about us and hearing about the support message you can also be an angel of hope by sending through your donation to our mobile money line 
3083 and God will richly bless you. Till we meet again next Sabbath, always remember to read your Bible and to pray every day. I urge you, I encourage you, pray first thing in the morning. Read your Bible first thing in the morning, even before you pick your phone, even before you wash your face. And do that last thing at night before you go to bed. May God be with us all till we meet again next Sabbath. Shalom. touched, inspired, and blessed by this message and want further Bible studies or want to be baptized, please send a WhatsApp or text message to 055 96 800 66. Alternatively, you can send an email to hopetvghana at gmail.com or call 0302 959065. God bless you and keep watching Hope Channel, your preferred Christian channel.